Hi all, welcome to the final section of this course, ASP.NET Core on the MVC framework. This section will explore creating an ASP.NET Core application with the MVC framework. Let's start this section with the video, including middleware. This video will show you how to set up middleware on your ASP.NET Core application. Let us first learn about MVC. MVC stands for Model View Controller. An HTTP request is sent to a controller, which is then mapped to a method inside the controller class. Inside that method, the controller decides what to do with the HTTP request. It then constructs a model that is agnostic to the controller and request. The model brings all the logic together that contains the information the controller needs. The view is then used to display the information contained inside the model to build an HTML page that gets sent back to the requesting client in the HTTP response. What the MVC framework allows us to do is separate the logic by letting each component of the framework focus on one specific thing. The controller receives the HTTP request and builds a model. The model contains the data we requested and sends it to the view. The view then creates the HTML page from the data contained in the model. Now let's learn about middleware. Middleware in ASP.NET defines how our application responds to any HTTP requests it receives. It is also useful for controlling how our application responds to user authentication or errors. It can also perform logging operations regarding income requests. Let's now dive into the practical stuff. First, create an ASP.NET Core web application. Select Empty Template and click on OK. And your current ASP.NET Core application should contain a configure method. Now replace this line with this new line. From the Debug menu, click on Start Without Debugging or press Ctrl plus F5. You will see the date displayed as shown. Go back to your code and tell your application to display the welcome page middleware. You can do this by adding app.useWelcomePage method just before the app.run method. Save your startup.cs file and refresh your browser. You now no longer see the date displayed on the screen. This is because the welcome page is the terminating middleware and any HTTP requests do not pass through that. Let us now modify the welcome page middleware. If you save your file and refresh your browser now, you will see the date displayed in the browser again. So what happened? Well, you just told the welcome page middleware to only respond to requests for a forward slash hello page. Change the URL in the browser as shown and press enter. The welcome page is displayed again. Let's take a look at the use develop exception page middleware. Modify app.run method. Save your changes and refresh your browser. You will see that the browser now displays a page that a developer will find extremely useful. It displays the stack information, the incoming query, any cookies, as well as the header info. It even tells us on what line the exception happened, line 36 in the startup.cs file. The use developer exception page middleware allows the request to pass through it to the lower middleware. If an exception happens, this would then allow the use developer exception page middleware to do its job. As mentioned earlier, the placement of middleware is important. If we had this use developer exception page method middleware at the end of the page, it wouldn't catch any unhandled exceptions. It is therefore a good idea to have this at the top of your configure method. Let's take this concept further. When we are in a production environment, 
we would typically not want the user to see the exception page. Assume that they need to be directed to a friendly error page. Start off by adding a static HTML page to the WW root of your application. Right click on the WW root and select Add New Item from the context menu. Select an HTML page and call it friendlyerror.html and click on Add. Now modify the HTML of friendlyerror.html. Here we add title as friendly error and add a few words. What we need to do next is add a NuGet package to our application so that we can serve static files. In the NuGet package manager, search for the Microsoft.asp netcore.static files and add that to the application. Now we need to modify the code slightly to simulate that it is running in a production environment. We do this by setting the environment name property of the iHosting environment interface as shown. We add an else statement to the if condition and write the code to call our custom static error page. It is here that we will add the friendly error.html file to our default file names collection and tell our application that we want to use this error file on any exceptions in the production environment. Lastly, we tell our application to use static files by calling the useStaticFiles method. Press Ctrl plus F5 again to restart IIS Express and launch our application. You will see that our custom error page has been displayed inside the browser.